One of the most common questions I get asked at reenactments is, why the giant hat? Why the bearskin cap? Now, the bearskin cap is one of the most iconic and, and really definitive features of the British Grenadier and the Fusilier. We talked about that one earlier. It's, in any case. But why exactly did they, they wear them? Now, uh, popular culture, like, like um, you know, popular history, tends to say that, oh, well, it wasn't a very wide hat, and so you're more easily able to sling your arms for actually throwing the grenade. And this, but this only applies, again, to grenadiers, it doesn't apply to fusiliers, but let's talk about that, um, let's just talk about that point to begin with, because I don't really buy that even for the grenadiers. Uh, I'm going to show you why I don't buy that with a much easier, much simpler canteen. Now, say the command, you know, you're sitting there, you know, yeah, with your canteen that you're going to sling for some reason, it's just, it's, it's, you'll see why I'm doing with the canteen and not with the musket in a bit. 23rd, or regulars, gren grenadiers, sling your arms! Alright, there you go, ready, see? Easy, <laughs> nice, nice and simple. Not at all. If you're going to sling your arms, it'd be actually, I think, easier. It would be better to have a, you know, just a cocked hat that you can just pop, sling it over, and then pop it right back on. Because with this thing, I mean, now, you know, I'm this isn't my real hair. I am wearing a wig. They would just usually wear their hair like this, so it wouldn't be as much of a process for them to take it off. But even still, you're not really just going to be ripping it off like you can easily a cocked hat. You're not really going to, you know, it, it's not it's not an easy thing to do. The idea that the bearskin cap, you know, this really tall thing, same thing with like the miter cap, really tall hats, made it somehow easier to sling arms? No, not, not at all. That's not the case. I, I don't believe that for a second. But then, why would they be given these taller uh, bearskin caps? And, and again, we don't only have grenadiers wearing them, we have fusiliers, see, at least some fusilier regiments, wearing them. But, but why? Why were they given? Well, in order to understand that, you have to realize that when the uniforms in this time period, you know, when the, the uniforms of the American Revolution were being designed, they weren't really being designed with things like utility in mind. They were being designed for, for a more temperate European climate. They were designed to look, you know, beautiful. They were designed to look expensive and, and very well tailored. And they were designed to look impressive. You were supposed to look at a soldier and say, ah, that is an arm of the government. That is the arm of the king. That is, you know, it, it's impressive. It's, it's domineering. It, it's, it's strong. It's powerful. It, it's, it's very presence is something to be inspired by. I understand it's very difficult to understand that when you're looking at me, but <laughs> perhaps some other, you know, more period appropriate uh, examples will showcase this a bit more easily. Now, insofar as that's really the purpose, the, the, the way that these uniforms were designed, to look impressive, the bearskin cap goes quite a long way. Now, I am a short individual, but this cap, you know, it, it gives me something of an added height. It makes me look taller than I really am. It does make me look at least a little bit more impressive. Not by much, but it does, a little bit. Trust me, please, believe me, a little bit more. Not only does it add sort of a height, an added height to you, but it adds at least a little bit to the width, to the, to the girth, to the, the mass of the soldier as they're approaching you. It adds something just more to look at, really, something more to fill your vision. If you imagine, not just, you know, little old me here, standing here in, in my bearskin cap, but a whole line of, you know, a hundred, of two hundred of these big, strong men, you, again, taller for their age, um, I'm sorry, for, for the age, with bayonets on the end of their muskets, you know, pointing right at you, these great big tall hats, and they're screaming at you, or even worse, they're approaching in deadly silence, and you know they want to stick those pieces of metal into your gullet. Well, it adds something to the appearance, I think. If you imagine, again, on the field, it's, after firing a few volleys, smoke all around. You can't see all that much. It's noisy. It's stressful. The only thing that you can smell is, is the sulfur in the air from the smoke. The only thing you taste is the gunpowder. And then, through the, the din of war, you hear a single drumbeat. A bum, 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 bum. And you hear 
footsteps and peep and men shouting and cheering commands and you see across the field through the smoke what are the first things you're going to see when that line of soldiers when that line of fusiliers is approaching you the first things that you see are the glinting of bayonets the marching the stamping of feet and bearskin caps their you know uh plates out in front shining through that's kind of terrifying it's it's Already you have this idea in your head of, oh, if they're wearing a bearskin, it means that they're, they're something special. They're not just a regular soldier. They're somehow more elite. They're somehow stronger. They're like shock troops. And that is a terrifying sight. You're going, odds are, to run away. And in this time period, you cannot underestimate the value of, of morale and of these sorts of terrifying and spectacular shows and displays of force on the battlefield. That having been said, though, while this is probably the idea of the very, you know, high-minded officers sitting on their horses saying, oh, yes, you know what'll help? If we make them look scarier, they'll, they'll all run away and everything like that. Well, that was the idea. Oftentimes, at least, again, on the American continent, soldiers would get these things, like, wow, okay, so, um, it's, uh, scratchy, it's heavy, it's hot. I mean, already, just from wearing it, you know, for the past however many minutes recording a few videos, I can sort of feel the ring around me, like the ghost of the, the bear bite, as they call it, around my forehead, where it's just sort of pressing in a little bit and leaning on me. It's not exactly a comfortable thing to wear. In the heat of South Carolina, in the middle of summer, let me just say, it's not exactly a very, it's not very pleasant. It's not pleasant at all. And oftentimes, soldiers would ditch them. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, like, you know, oh, you can find where the grenadiers are because there's a small line of uh, bearskin caps along the road where they were. But at least, in, again, in the American War of Independence, we know that regiments like the 23rd would lose them at some point during the war. You know, put them into a warehouse somewhere in the city before going out on campaign. And they'd usually wear, like, cocked hats or, you know, uh, more caps and um, much less, shall we say, formal-looking things out in the field, out, you know, rough and dirty on the southern campaign. If, however, they serve some sort of a, of a practical purpose, like, you know, slinging the arms or really anything at all, I don't think they would have been nearly so eager to ditch them, and I think that they would have, you know, shown a bit more of a practical design. They would have been lighter and more, maybe, uh, more fabric-based, like, like the miter cap of the Seven Years' War. So, there you have it, everyone. If you were to ask a soldier of the 18th century, why are you wearing that great big bearskin, or of the 19th century, even, you know, we have them at, uh, in the Crimea, why are you wearing that massive, uncomfortable, hot, heavy, bearskin cap? Well, primarily because the officers told them to. Come on. Come on.